I'm John Theriault running for state representative in Cheshire 8, which for most of us means Keene Ward 5. Uh, I, am I was born and raised in New England. I joined the Navy at 18. It took me 27 years to get back, but now I'm happily retired here in Keene. And I'd like to give back to uh, this city and this state by serving in the state legislature. Uh, a little bit about myself, I am uh, a husband of 42 years, a father of three, uh, and a grandfather of three. Uh, and uh, I went to the U.S. Naval Academy where I majored in engineering and I have an MBA. I've won and negotiated multi-million dollar contracts and I've run multi-million dollar businesses. The last one here in Keene, uh, you might be familiar with Janos Technology uh, on Blackbrook Road. I was motivated to run for the State House because I don't believe we are currently well represented. Uh, the current uh, representative uh, missed 30 percent of the floor votes in 2018 uh, and by his own request did not participate in any committees in the last session of the legislature. If you know anything about the legislature, and I've worked to pass a couple of bills up there over the last few years, most of the work on new legislation is done in committee. That's where the public hearings are. That's where amendments are proposed. Uh, that's where the wording on the bills are refined. And that's where the vote is taken to send the bill to the floor as either OTP ought to pass or ITL inexpedient to legislate. If you're not going to participate in the committees, you are not representing uh, your district. So that motivated, motivated me to run uh, for the State House. I will work for th towards three things uh, in the legislature. The first is protecting the New Hampshire Constitution. The second is promoting economic development uh, in western New Hampshire and specifically Cheshire County. And the third is getting rid of old and outdated laws that restrict personal freedom. Uh, I know that a lot of people, and I, I believe that there are too many laws in the books, and at some point we all wind up stepping on one or the other, and the only way to, re to make it better for everybody is to get rid of outdated laws uh, and get it down to the point where everybody can understand what the laws say and, and work to follow them. So I ask for your vote on Tuesday, November 6, uh, for state legislature. Again, my name is John Theriault. Thank you very much. Hey, I'm Ian Freeman. I'm running for State Senate, District 10, as a Libertarian. It's the first time that uh, we've had a Libertarian choice here in the Cheshire County area for quite a long time. And I wanted to let you know a little bit about what it means to be a Libertarian. It means that unlike the Republican and Democrats in the race and across New Hampshire, I'm not interested in telling you how to live. I don't want to rule your life. I don't want to tax you. I don't want to control you. So that's one of the big changes. Uh, libertarians believe in the non-aggression principle. That means that uh, if you're a libertarian, you don't believe in the use of aggression or aggressive force or the threat of force to try to control your neighbors. So there's three main issues uh, that I'm running on. First, uh, to end drug prohibition across the board. Uh, let's focus on cannabis first here because cannabis is obviously something that New Hampshire is going to legalize at some point. So really the big question is, will New Hampshire do it the right way? or will they go about it the way the other states have done it, which is to control and tax and regulate uh, cannabis. It's a plant. So we're talking about something that grows naturally in the earth. It's a flowering plant, and it does not need to be regulated. It does not need to be taxed. So what New Hampshire needs to do, hopefully, is they will get out of the way completely, just end prohibition and let people grow this plant or sell it or possess it, smoke it, bake it whatever it is they want to do. Further, New Hampshire ought to end prohibition across the board, not just of cannabis, but of other drugs, of gambling, of prostitution. No act that involves consenting individuals should be prohibited. Also, I think that it's time New Hampshire left the United States. Let's be honest, the federal government, whether it's Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump, is a very scary, dangerous institution 
that hurts innocent people here in the United States and across the planet. Um, and all they really do is extract wealth and obedience from you. But what do you get back in return for it? Is it protection? Because right now, uh, the U.S. government's military is putting you in a greater danger by going around the world and uh, getting involved in other people's conflicts. So let's get New Hampshire out of the Union. Uh, let's end that experiment and actually have a truly free place here where we're not under the thumb of the United States federal government. Uh, also, I want to see New Hampshire volunteerize taxes. Now, that's a pretty big proposal, but it's very, very libertarian because libertarians, again, don't agree with aggressive force, and taxes are basically extortion, wherein if you don't pay whatever arbitrary amount the government demands from you, then they're going to come and steal your house from you or harm you in some other fashion, maybe steal your, you know, your car or whatever it is. And so it's not okay to do that. It's not okay to threaten our neighbors to try to get something done. Maybe some of the tax dollars are actually going to some sort of worthwhile thing, like perhaps helping the poor or uh, you know, helping the sick. Those are things that can be done consensually. If you've got a good idea, people are going to fund it voluntarily. Look at what happens when somebody's house burns down. Support pours in from the community, regardless of the fact that the government is there or not. So let's make taxes consensual. Make it so that people can opt in or out of funding these various different state government programs. Ultimately, uh, the idea here is to delegitimize, from my perspective at least, is to de delegitimize the idea of the state government, period. Uh, because government is an old concept. It's an antiquated, thousands-year-old concept that justifies the rule of a certain group of strangers over a group of peaceful people, the rest of us. So I want to see that paradigm shift, and this campaign is part of that. It is a very low-budget campaign. I'm not accepting any contributions, so if you want to contribute, sorry. I'm not going to accept a contribution. You're welcome, certainly, to contribute in whatever way you want with, you know, make up your own campaign signs or do whatever it is that you want to do. But ultimately, this is a message campaign, getting out the ideas of liberty, letting folks know what liberty actually is, because most politicians have no relationship to that concept uh, whatsoever. So if you want to learn a little bit more about me, I've got a website. It's ianfreeman.nh-liberty.info. So ianfreeman.nh-liberty.info. And again, I'm Ian Freeman, running for State Senate, District 10 this year. Thanks. My name is Delmar Burridge. I'm running for uh, New Hampshire House Rep in Cheshire 16. Keen voters, you first elected me in 2006, 12 years ago. I'm asking for your vote for my fifth term with my personal belief that I still will remain your new voice in Concord. And I got some explaining to do with a boast like that. More than any other House representative, I have filed the most House bills to comply with the New Hampshire Supreme Court's decision of Claremont 1 and Claremont 2 for full funding of K-12 to with an income tax rather than a property tax. Who wants to even remotely make this claim, even if they have the skill set of talking out of the other side of their mouth? More than any other representative, I have filed the most gun sense or safe gun bills in Concord. My latest red flag bill has been on the governor's hand since last April. Also, the Senate and House leadership for both parties have it. I've informed NPR that I urged a rush order. Ollie North, the president of the NRA, has it, and I've invited him to appear and support my gun bill. Safe cities, gun sense, Moms Demand Action, and New Hampshire pro-gun groups have had this for months. I meet as early as 7 a.m. in Concord with this leadership and much later in the day with local groups in Cheshire County. 7,000 house bills later, I remain fresh as a daisy at age 72. I talk to the other side all the time and ask people, and people ask me, how do I do this? My stock answers are, I've worked in a courthouse for 35 years. Some were criminals, others not. The other being, I'm a highly paid professional. I am used to people who are not like me and usually focus on some commonality no matter what your station is in life. I'm clearly the opposite of uppity. I sponsored a House Bill Republican Neil Kirk for fusion centers. It passed. I signed on to Cheshire County Republicans Jim McConnell Congressional Resolution to close a loophole on the internet that allowed child trafficking to slip through. 
I've asked Jim to co-sponsor my red flag bill. John Burt, one of my friendlier colleagues in Concord, who I keep asking to co-sponsor my red flag, told me he was once asked, how do we get rid of Del Mar? His reply, he's from Keene. Oh, I'm very proud to own that belief. John told me if he co-sponsors any of my gun bills, they'll hang him, but I keep talking to him. So why do I do this three or four days weekly from January to May or June in Concord? It's not because I get to decorate the hills on state highways with my dog sign and to elect Delmar Burridge for the New Hampshire House. It's payback. After the death of both Kennedys and Martin Luther King, Congress passed LEAP, which stands for Law Enforcement Assistance Program. This act paid for almost all my graduate school tuition that provided me promotional criminal justice opportunities in all three branches of government, as well as 12 years of college teaching and university teaching. I feel I still owe. Now on to the crisis of the animal shelter in Cheshire County. Due to police actions, they suddenly have all at once 54 yellow lab retrievers that need fostering out. If you know someone who needs a tail wagging friend, the most popular, maybe the easiest breed in America, take them to see the dogs. Thank you for your time and listening to me and consideration of my candidacy and continue being your new voice. My name is Gilletta Jarvis and I'm running for New Hampshire governor. Like you, I'm worried about the potential for a new tax in our state, what it would mean for our businesses, our tourism, and our citizens. Like you, I worry about our energy costs and how large next year's budget proposal will be. I worry about the rising costs of education and New Hampshire's opioid addiction rates. I'm tired of waiting for some mysterious politician who will appear out of the woodwork and care about those of us who are not counted amongst the wealthy. I'm running for governor because I genuinely care about this state and the people that I share it with. I will be fighting for you to keep as much of your hard-earned money in your pocket as possible. That means working to fix our energy and health care regulations that have driven up your costs. It means working to promote new and innovative technologies in our state through fixing small business regulations and occupational licensing. It means supporting our low-income residents to find work by reforming our welfare programs so that these able-bodied people are not forced to become dependent on the state. I'm proposing that we work together to fix the problems in New Hampshire. The hemp industry can create hemp planks and insulation which are resistant to mold, fire, mildew, and wood-boring insects, all of which we face here in New Hampshire. And we are currently allowed to own these products, but we're not allowed to create them or grow it here. Let's revolutionize our green science industry in New Hampshire and be leaders in the industry in America. Let's also remove those occupational licenses that do not support public safety, but support the bigger businesses keeping the smaller entrepreneurs out. We already removed the requirement for hair braiding, but there are more that do not pose a public threat if they are unlicensed by the state. Let them license if they want to, so that you can use your power of choice to determine who you want to do business with. There should not be a reason to have multiple licenses to start up a business. It's just red tape. It costs time and money on the part of the small business and on the state, and it's money that we don't need to be spending. Let's fix education in this state. According to a study published in April of this year, there are only four states that can boast that their high school graduates are qualified to attend in-state colleges if they are not honor students and New Hampshire is not one of them. Yet our education prices are getting so high that many towns are reporting that people are leaving due to the increase in costs or considering taking the state back to court. I'm proposing that we form an education commission to work on this problem, to fund students' education choices by determining what they need to actually qualify to attend college and what the cost of that education is. I'm also proposing a cap to local school districts on what they can ask for outside of this amount from the families in their district that the voters can then vote yes or no on and they, if they want to, they can still donate more than that. But they cannot request more 
via taxes. Let's also legalize cannabis, as it has been proven to bring down addiction rates in those areas that have legalized it. We need to stop basing our regulations on outdated fears put into place years ago by racist government officials. Legalization will bring down violence as well from the need for people to seek out unsavory drug dealers who may push solutions that may get people addicted to substances that could lead to their demise. Let's use the funds set aside for incarceration of cannabis users towards treatment and mental health facilities to promote prevention of addiction and to help those who need it the most but are having a hard time finding it. Let's hold our public officials accountable and make our government regulations easy to find and access, including business licenses needed, better search functions, and how to file a complaint. It's 2018 and time to bring our website up to standards. Let's make our New Hampshire state government, the most user-friendly government there is. Let's use this year to think differently and vote differently. Vote Jaletta Jarvis for New Hampshire governor. I'm Jay Kahn, and I'm running for re-election for state senate in District 10, representing 15 of 23 towns in Cheshire County. It's been a great honor and privilege to represent you in the State Senate over the last two years. I believe it's a great application of my education, which uh, has a PhD in public policy studies. Uh, my leadership, uh, having 43 years of higher education leadership uh, experience, and my relationships, having built up uh, those uh, through service as the chairman of the Cheshire Medical Center Board, uh, as well as chairman of the Greater Keene Chamber of Commerce and the Monadnock Economic Development Corporation and serving on many other boards, uh, state and nationally, uh, building up networks uh, of contacts in both areas. Uh, my wife, Cheryl, uh, has uh, worked in the schools for 23 years in the region, uh, both at Fall Mountain and at Monadnock Regional High School. Uh, she currently is on the board of the Community Kitchen uh, and volunteers extensively in the community as well. Um, over the last two years, I've done a lot working with groups to make sure that we're implementing some laws and, and changes that can improve the lives and services for people in the Monadnock region. In this area of schools, work to make, ensure that Hinsdale School, elementary school expansion uh, was funded, that the Monadnock after school program was funded, uh, that kindergarten for the first time in 20 years full day kindergarten would receive full day reimbursement work with the health care providers to assure that uh, we ex can accelerate the hiring of nurses and therapists so badly needed by our nursing homes our medical and mental health care providers uh, I worked with the Chamber of Commerce and the towns in the region to make sure that broadband internet services would be uh, expanded in this region uh, to provide us uh, services that are comparable to more urban areas. Uh, and I work to improve the efficiency and transparency of government with a number of bills that have been signed into law by our governor. There are four issues that I believe are really important for this region over the next two years. The first, it's the economy. And we've got to assure a workforce to help build our economy for the future. In particular, uh, we need to make sure that, high, uh, that college graduates uh, have loan replacement programs to encourage them to stay in, 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 uh, with employers that will provide that kind of benefit locally. Uh, a second is uh, that we uh, assure that there are pathways from high school into the workforce with work-ready credentials uh, that we can uh, uh, have every high school student possess uh, and find uh, job entry opportunities locally. Um, and third, we've got to uh, make sure that early childhood education is available for every child between zero and four uh, because the, our school improvements uh, will be, there's no better payback than early childhood education. Second priority is everybody deserves health care. Uh, the commitment requires an adequate workforce uh, so that we can reduce wait times and people can get into treatment uh, services as quickly as possible. 
I will fight for Cheshire County to have community-based mental health care, drug treatment, and prevention programs. Third, we've got to reduce our dependence on property taxes. The benefits of business tax cuts are just not reaching the middle and lower income homeowners and renters in our region. The state is putting annual surpluses into state rainy day funds, and if you were a business, you'd declare a dividend. I will fight to direct those surpluses and additional revenues to reduce property taxes. And four, we need a 21st century infrastructure, not just for roads and bridges, which are important, but we also need to assure high-speed internet communications, quality water supplies, and renewable energy sources for people in this state. I believe my record in higher education and in the legislature demonstrate my ability to work with people of different stripes to get things done. I look forward to continuing to serve you for two more years. Thank you so much for your support over the last two years, and I assure you I will continue to fight for your interests in the state legislature. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm David Meter, running for re-election to the state legislature representing Keene's Ward 3, which is Cheshire District 6. I'm a lifelong resident of Keene, product of Keene Schools, graduate of Keene State College, and I've lived in Ward 3 for almost 60 years. I've always believed in civic engagement and community involvement and have displayed that by serving numerous times on the Keene City Council and the New Hampshire Legislature. Um, the city of Keene, state of New Hampshire, this is a great area to live, work, raise a family, get a good ed education. We need to preserve these attributes and assets while at the same time dealing with the same problems facing municipalities and, and states all over America. Obviously, my top priorities in the next legislative session would be putting more resources in the battle against the drug addiction, uh, better solutions to assist that segment of our population facing mental challenges, and how to adequately fund road, bridge, and the critical infrastructure improvements that we need to uh, affect. Um, also a high priority, as it is every year, is devoting the necessary resources to primary and secondary education. And lastly, I think we need to focus more attention on making post-secondary education more affordable for all of those who want to attend. I've worked with uh, many young people over the years, and they've come to Keene, and they go to Keene State College for a year or two, then they are forced to drop out because they can't afford to go any further. And these people are, are good college students, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's frustrating to see that. And we, we've got to, as a state, devote more attention to making it affordable so that these young people don't go out of state for their education and, then, and for their careers. As a forward-looking progressive voice, I'm a member of a legislative body comprised of people from all walks of life, and most of them are dedicated to making New Hampshire a better place to live. It's how we achieve that goal where, where the differences arise. And each of us brings a unique perspective to the lawmaking process. And as part of my deliberations, I like to keep in mind a few key concepts. Compassion, justice, fairness. I think these have served me well over the past, and with voter support, I'll continue to do this for the next two years. So I would urge everyone to get out and vote. The primary election is September 11th. The general election is November 6th. Uh, I can't urge you enough to get out and vote. And um, I, Over the years, I've had several colleagues that have uh, won or lost elections by just a few votes, e even one vote. And um, as, as a good example, um, in 2015, um, 2013, I uh, was elected to the city council by just four votes. So every vote does count. And um, I've got a lot of colleagues that will tell you that, exactly that. So. Uh, so thank you very much, and as I say, get out and uh, exercise your uh, right to vote. So thank you.
Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, running for state representative in Cheshire 16, which is the floaterial district covering the entire city of Keene. I'm running for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, for the first time in over 20 years, the Libertarian Party has full ballot access in New Hampshire. And in order to retain ballot access, we need to make sure that we get 4% of the vote for our gubernatorial nominee. That happened in 2016, which gave us ballot access. Prior to 1997, the vote threshold for retaining ballot access was 3%. I would, if elected, introduce legislation to reduce that vote retention down to actually 2%, which is the national median, meaning that half of the states have vote thresholds that are at or below 2% of the vote for a statewide office. The other half of the states have a vote threshold that is above. Our vote threshold currently is double the national median. I would also, if elected, introduce legislation to allow for alternative methods of a party getting ballot access, meaning that I would like to see voter registration be used as an option for a party retaining ballot access, which is something that a lot of states that have partisan uh, voter registration actually do. New Hampshire, one of those states that does not. I would also, if elected, wind up introducing legislation to fully legalize cannabis. I'm not talking about creating a tax and regulate scheme like what was adopted in Massachusetts and Maine back in 2016 and yet to actually be fully implemented. What I'm talking about when I say full legalization is that cannabis should be treated the same way tomatoes are, where actually if you look at the New Hampshire statutes, you will not find the word tomato in statutes. But no one would say that tomatoes are not a legal substance. It simply means that there are no regulations on the amount of tomatoes that you can purchase when you go to the store. There are no regulations on the number of tomato plants that you can have in your yard. There's no regulations on the number of tomatoes that you can wind up selling to your neighbor. Now, certainly there are regulations, uh, rightly or wrongly, there are regulations on various uh, businesses conducting business. But again, no regulations specifically about tomatoes. And I believe that cannabis, which is a plant, should be treated in the exact same way. I also think that integrity of the vote is very important. And part one, Article 11 of the New Hampshire Constitution says that all inhabitants have the right to vote. That means that college students living in New Hampshire should be allowed to vote in New Hampshire. When the Republican legislature wound up passing SB3, I was one of the vocal opponents of SB3. When the Republican legislature earlier this year passed the statute that amends the definition of residency. I was a vocal opponent of that legislation as well. Luckily, SB3 is being challenged in court and the other bill, I believe HB 1264, does not go into effect until next year. But if elected, I would introduce legislation to actually repeal both of those pieces of legislation. And most importantly, for the people of New Hampshire and Keene specifically, I would work to reduce the tax burdens. Keene has one of the highest effective property tax rates in the state, and that's something that definitely needs to be fixed. Now, I realize a lot of that happens at the local level, but there are pieces of legislation that could be passed at the state level that would wind up affecting some of those things at the local level. So I would appreciate your vote on November 6th in the general election. All right, my name is William Pearson. I'm running for State Representative Cheshire 16. Hello, again, my name is William Pearson, and I first wanted to introduce myself as a candidate for those of you who don't already know me. I was born in San Diego, California in 1991, and my parents then moved to uh, Bedford, New Hampshire in 1992, where they raised me and my sister, uh, and they still reside there. Um, it makes visits very convenient, actually. So I then graduated Bedford High School in 2010, and found my way to Keene uh, that, that the summer of that very year to attend Keene State College. 
I graduated Keene State College in 2014 with a degree in political science and, and a minor in history, and I decided to use my degree right out of the gate and, and run for state office. That summer, uh, the summer of 14, I, I ran as the Ward 1 state representative here in Keene. Um, I was fortunate enough to, to win the election and uh, serve on the election law committee for the following term. In that term, I uh, was again fortunate to be a member of the New Leaders Council. Uh, it was the uh, pilot program for the, for the group in New Hampshire. It's a group of progressives that holds trainings and, and, um, and a pretty intensive uh, fellowship throughout, throughout the country. They have uh, branches in almost every state now, I think. Um, so that's what occupied my 2015 summer. Uh, moving on to the next term, I, I ran for state rep at large here in Keene for the 2016 uh, election cycle. Again, I was fortunate enough to win. Um, and it was in that year that I won uh, the Legislator of the Year Award from the New Hampshire Municipal, Municipal Association, rather, and the New Hampshire Young Democrats. Uh, two groups that, I'm, that I, I had the extreme pleasure of working with during that term, two groups that don't necessarily have the same agendas. Uh, not only that, but I also received, most recently, a 100% on the ACLU's legislative scorecard. Uh, another group to throw into the mix that doesn't necessarily align uh, pl with, with the political agendas of the, of the prior two. Um, that said, I'm now attending UNH School of Law, where I hope to graduate in 2019. During my stay at the UNH School of Law, I've done several internships that I'd love to parlay, and I already have parlayed, into my work as a state representative. The first summer I served, uh, I served rather, I, I spent time with the New Hampshire, um, the, the National Educators Association of New Hampshire, uh, doing work uh, with labor law in the state. Uh, the most recent summer I spent half of it with the New Hampshire Secretary of State and their Securities Division, and then the second half with uh, the Court Appointed Special Advocates, the CAS in New Hampshire, dealing with child abuse and neglect cases. Uh, those are two, um, well, New Hampshire Secretary of State and child abuse and neglect cases is a segue into what my legislative agenda is going to be for this upcoming term. I obviously want to continue my work on election law, modernizing New Hampshire uh, election laws, and, and bringing in bold progressive election laws like automatic voter registration. Um, we need to preserve same-day voter registration, obviously. And, uh, and s switching to the, the work I want to do with child and family law, I think there's a lot we can do in New Hampshire at, um, at, at leveraging federal dollars that are already on the table to, to the struggling youth of our communities. Um, for instance, in 2008, Congress passed a law allowing states to extend foster care to 21. I think it's worth, New Hampshire doesn't do that right now, and I think it's worth, uh, it w it's worth it for the legislator, legislature to take a look at that. Um, that all being said, there are 57 young Democrats running for the State House this year, uh, myself being among them. That number I is massive compared to other years, and, and, I, and I hope that Republican numbers are seeing similar, uh, similar counts for their young hopefuls. Uh, because once we come to the legislature uh, in this coming fall, I'm hoping we have a, I'm hoping we're bringing down the median age a little, and some of us young legislators who have served can, can provide guidance to the incoming uh, crop and, frankly, for the future of the state of New Hampshire. It's for those reasons that I'm running for the state house here in Keene, and I hope that the voters of Keene will elect me for a third term. Thank you. I'm Tom Alsier. I'm running for United States House of Representatives in the 2nd Congressional District of New Hampshire. I want to make a difference in Washington by supporting liberty and thinking logically. I support your right to liberty. I support everybody's right to liberty. My goals will be to reduce the governmental burdens of, uh, imposed on small businesses abolish the federal income tax because it's a major invasion of people's privacy, and uh, do away with any and all federal laws that violate either the doctrine of enumerated powers or the unalienable rights of the innocent outvoted victims. I am a pro-life candidate, but my priority will be abolishing the burdens that the system places on single moms. A lot of uh, government programs don't, uh, don't take single moms into account, and that's a problem. The rights of all people have to be protected. I support open borders. 
I'm the opposite of Donald Trump. He hates Mexicans. He hates Muslims. I say tear down the border wall so that traveling from uh, Mexico into the United States will be just as simple as walking from Massachusetts into New Hampshire. The government never had any right to impose restrictions on immigration. This morning, August 14, 2018, I arrived at Logan Airport with my wife and daughter, and I would not go through the usual line where they make you play with a new computer, learn a new computer system so that you can do the bureaucrats' work for them. They had to send me to a different line, and we went through the old-fashioned way. I support everybody's right to deal with federal agencies face-to-face. -face. To renew my daughter's passport down in Santo Domingo, they said, oh, you have to go online and schedule an appointment to go into the consular section. That's garbage. I wound up paying 5,000 pesos to a private agency to deal with the paperwork to get the appointment. That's nonsense. All of this should have been done by the employees in the consular section. Imagine if the Department of Motor Vehicles made you bring in your own picture for your driver's license. Why don't they simply take your picture at the passport agency and issue the license? Why did she need to renew it? Well, that's my fault. I failed to renew it on time. We left on her other passport and came back on the new passport. I take the rap when it's my fault. And I will take the rap if I blunder, but <coughs> I will assign the blame when it's beyond the reach of the individual who is the victim. I support liberty and justice for all, and I want to secure the benefits, the blessings of the metric system to ourselves and our posterity. I am sick and tired of us intelligent people being pushed around by those ignoramuses who are proud that they don't even know the metric system. I don't have a lot of money for a campaign, but that shouldn't be a problem. Taking the flight back, I don't know much about how to fly a jet, and that's okay because I left that to people who took the time to learn how to do that job. If I tried my hand, if I tried to wing it, then I might crash into you and that would violate your rights. So I leave that to people who know what they're doing. If you're not going to take the time to learn, then you shouldn't be voting. You need to visit the Project Vote Smart website and learn who's running, visit their campaign websites and compare them and figure out for U.S. House of Representatives, there's no U.S. Senate race in New Hampshire and no presidential race this year, who is most likely to adhere strictly to the doctrine of enumerated powers and to support the unalienable rights of all persons. I'm Terry Clark and I'm running for Cheshire County Treasurer. I live here in Keene. I'm married to my wife, Dr. Skye Stevenson. I have four grown children and two grandkids, one of which just finished swimming lessons. There you go, Jason. Um, educationally, I have a Bachelor's of, of, of Arts degree in Public Affairs Journalism and uh, some paralegal training. Um, I was in the Army and uh, I did electrical power gen generation. Uh, right now, I'm retired, but I do do uh, real estate um, on the side, uh, so I have plenty of time for you. Uh, I've been involved in many organizations throughout the, oh, I guess I've been here 57, 58 years. Uh, you know, they include, right now, I'm on the board of the Monadnock Area Drug and Alcohol Coalition. I've been on the, uh, uh, the board of the Community Kitchen, and um, in past in other towns, the uh, Slate Covered Bridge Restoration Committee, the United Way, March of Dimes, Muscular Dystrophy, and some of you maybe remember the Keene JCs. Um, big brothers, big sisters, and of course, like I said, uh, I served uh, our country in the Army in the 82nd Airborne. Um, right now, I'm a member of the Keene City Council. Um, I'm also a New Hampshire Department of Transportation Highway Commissioner. I have served on the Monadnock School District Budget Committee. 
and the Keen Community B, um, excuse me, the Keen Community Goals Committee and the Keen Long Range Planning Committee. Um, a couple years ago, I was on the Keen Heritage Commission and the Keen Cable Commission, and uh, I co-chaired the Keen Drug Addiction Task Force. Um, why I'm running for uh, treasurer? Well, I have an interest in promoting efficient government. And the office of treasurer is very well defined, and it's a real matter of fact public office. Is um, you know the primary duties include maintaining custody of uh, of the uh, of the money, um, all of the money that uh, that comes into the county and is paid out of the treasury. Uh, the treasurer has to keep an accounting of it. There is money that uh, is not being used uh, in the budget. Um, so the county treasurer um, has to invest those excess county funds uh, pursuant to state law. There, there's very strict and uh, um, um, specific uh, funds and such that you can use uh, to, uh, to invest the money safely. And um, they also, uh, excuse me, the, the treasurer uh, also borrows money uh, with, uh, you know, when the commissioners and the uh, state legislators decide that we want to build a new building or something, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the treasurer is the one who does that. And, uh, and finally, they issue warrants, and this is probably the most important part, you know, they issue warrants to the towns and assess their towns and um, make sure that they pay the taxes that are due um, uh, the, the, the county, because uh, right now, um, in the state of New Hampshire, we pay uh, a city tax, a school tax, and a county tax, as well as a small, um, uh, I guess, a, um, uh, a school tax that's for the state. Um, as far as my experience, I've, I've served uh, on several financial positions, both public and private. Right now, um, as I said, I'm in the Keene City Council. Uh, I'm a member of the Finance Organization and Personnel Committee. Um, I've um, been on the Monadnock School District Budget Committee, as I said, and the Community Kitchen Finance Committee, as well as writing and maintaining budgets for my own and other private businesses for the past 17 years. So when you vote on uh, November, um, I hope that you keep me in mind, and uh, I just want to say, please vote. Thank you very much for your time. Hi, my name is Robert Burns, and I'm running for U.S. Congress, District 2. Sir. Hi, my name is Robert Burns. I was born in Nashua, lived in Amherst, and I went to school right here at Keene State College. Um, so why am I running for Congress? Well, a little bit about me. I've been involved in politics since an early age. My mother immigrated here legally from Canada and got involved by running for the State House. She was also involved with the governor's elections at the time and later on presidential campaigns like Jack Kemp. I got involved in certain presidential elections as well from an early age like Newt Gingrich and Mike Huckabee and most recently Donald Trump. One of the reasons I'm running is to be there to support Donald Trump and his presidency and his agenda. Um, I think that what we've seen in Congress is we've seen a lot of ridiculousness, a lot of talk about you know, how 16 Russians have affected a presidential election with a few thousand dollars on Facebook. And it's kind of kind of time to start to end this ridiculousness and to move on with with a uh, with some seriousness. Some of the cornerstones of my campaigns has always been I'm a big Second Amendment guy. Um, I believe in uh, passing legislation for national reciprocity for uh, carrying licenses across the country. I think that if you have a license to carry a gun in New Hampshire, then that gun permit should cross over to, let's say, the Massachusetts border. Every once in a while, we hear about an unlucky individual who has a gun left in their car. They cross over the border. They might have a light out in their car, what have you, and then they're, you know, they find a gun in the car and they're arrested and, and uh, subsequently spend usually tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars defending themselves and even do some jail time and they're treated like criminals when they were just merely uh, exercising their constitutional rights. And obviously with certain people, the, the positions that they, they have, maybe as a truck driver or delivery person, takes them over the lines and that, over state lines and that they have every right to defend themselves and therefore that those should be, um, those should be honored. I've always, uh, I've always been consistently pro-life. 
Um, I'm a conservative when it comes to uh, taxes, uh, overregulation of the government, uh, government overreach. Uh, some of the cor other cornerstones of my campaign that I've been talking about is uh, taking the opioid uh, issue head on. This is something that we've seen. We've seen a lot of talk and we've put a lot of money towards uh, dealing with the opioid addiction issues, uh, but it hasn't worked out all that well. Um, we have continuously see uh, the amount of deaths, addictions, and overdoses going up. One of the things I'd like to do is reform uh, how treatment centers are run. I think that we need to get a little tougher on the addicts. And number two is that what we've done is we're really flooding the streets with a lot of opioids to help um, to help alleviate the opioid issues. And I think that that's something that, uh, that we're uh, just prescribing too many and now government's getting involved in, in uh, handing out these and Medicaid expansion has definitely been part of the problem of people being able to get their hands on more, more prescription opioids, which has not been helpful. Um, I'd like to help to bring manufacturing back to America. In my personal life, I work in manufacturing uh, all across the country, North and South America. Um, and I see a lot of manufacturing leaving because of the overreaching and the government regulations, as well as sometimes the pushback against automation that we've seen. Sometimes it's from the unions and sometimes it's Americans just being American and, and not accepting new technology. But I think that definitely what comes to uh, government overreach, um, those are certain ways that we can help automation uh, to get uh, implemented more here. And I, I think even though we see low unemployment right now, it's important for a country to do its own manufacturing and to actually produce something um, because it's, it's part of uh, national security to be able to make our own stuff. And I think that that's very important. And I think that's where I have a little bit of a different background than some of the other people are running. Obviously, like I said before, I, I want to support the, uh, the uh, president's agenda. I want to build the wall. Um, you know, it's going to be building a physical wall, but it's also going to be doing a lot of uh, implementing new technology to regulate who's coming back and forth over our borders. Um, I support the decriminalization of marijuana on the national level so that states have the choice to make up their own minds on whether, we, uh, um, whether they legalize it or not within their own states. So those are a few of the, the reasons why I'm running, and I hope for your vote this September 11th uh, for Congress, District 2 here in New Hampshire. Thank you.